Hello and welcome to this Tornado Outbreak Short Summary. This Tornado Outbreak Short Summary is going to be going over, obviously, a tornado outbreak. This one is the June 14th through 18th of 1992 event. With a pretty staggeringly high number of 170 confirmed tornadoes, most of these tornadoes would happen on June 14th through 15th across a relatively wide region from what I was able to gather. However, I could not find any pictures or a graph, chart, image of the United States and all of the tornado paths, unfortunately. We also know that by June 16th, so a day later, these, this low pressure that had been producing this event has now positioned itself more over the Rockies, producing an additional 65 tornadoes, most of these ranging from Colorado to Idaho. By the 17th and 18th, this low would then transition into the high plains, so we're talking at North and South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Ultimately there, it would produce three F4s and a singular F5. Now, very unfortunately, I was not able to find any info on any of the tornadoes of this outbreak except for the F5, so that is the only tornado that I'm able to talk about here. This F5 is the south of Leota to east of Lake Wilson, Minnesota F5. This tornado pictured here in the upper right caused $50 million in damage, injured 40, and only caused one death. It is still very unfortunate that somebody died, but considering that this is an F5, the highest echelon strength that tornadoes can be rated, it is very, very lucky that very few uh, casualties were caused. This tornado would also carve a path 35 miles long and had a maximum width of three-fourths of a mile wide, which is around 0.8 kilometers, if I remember correctly. Well, you at least know that this tornado would reach its, pink's, its peak, not pink, peak strength and size as it was uh, tearing up the residential areas of Chandler, Minnesota, at around 518. I would assume, given that this low pressure positioned itself in the high plains on the 17th and 18th, that this 518 time was either on June 17th or 18th. It is also worth noting that it is even more miraculous that so few casualties are produced, given that this tornado like I just said, went through the residential areas of a relatively large town. That is very, very lucky. This tornado would destroy 75 homes and damaged a further 102 structures, around 70 to 80 of which would be homes. The rest would be businesses, with the exclusion of two. One of them would be a school and another would be a church. This tornado had an over had a ground time of over an hour long. Most tornadoes are usually not on the ground for 10 minutes. This was on the ground for more than six times that, and that is a very long time for a tornado to be on the ground. This tornado also had a quite erratic uh, northward mostly path. As you can see here with this picture that just showed up in the lower right, we see it, of course, emerging, being produced, I should say, south of Leota, taking a more northward approach, because it wasn't already, right as it went through Chandler and Lake Wilson. It then, nearly at the intersection of some county roads, takes a sharp turn to be more towards the traditional tornado path of northwest rather than north-northwest. North northeast, I should say, sorry, and going more northeast, and just scrapes south of Gavin. Normally, this F2 track 
is the the normal path for a tornado. But as we can see here, this this one it decided that that is out of uh, that is completely out of date. Tornadoes going northeast is so out of fashion, and going north northeast is the way to go. This might also explain the fact that this tornado was only going, if we say it had an exactly an hour long ground time, only 35 miles per hour, which is still relatively fast, but for a tornado on the ground for over an hour, this uh, forward speed is not super impressive, per se. Not, not, not the fastest I've seen. This event was pretty major. Again, 170 tornadoes with four violent. Unfortunately, only able to talk about one of them. Um, it would produce, again, most of them on the 14th and 15th of June. With what, and that is the exact number is 123. This places it at number five in the lar as the largest two-day uh, tornado outbreak. So over the course of 48 hours, only being beaten out by, of course, uh, the two super outbreaks of 74 and 2011. Another outbreak that happened just before the 2011 uh, super. And... Another one that I cannot remember off the top of my head, although it may just be one of the 2021 events. This outbreak is still to this day the largest June outbreak ever. Again, 170 tornadoes. And in 1992 was actually the most ever in one month. Um... The super outbreak of 74 uh, was uh, very close to this with a in April. But on top of the 170 tornadoes from this outbreak, there is a further, uh, I think, around 100 or so more, I want to say. Or I may be vastly overestimating the amount there. But it was, again, just the most ever in one month. This would then be completely toppled by, ultimately, by the uh, 2011 super outbreak with 369 on top of the other 100 or and more that would ha occur from an outbreak that happened before the 2011 super. That was only a week before that. And that brought the total up to like close to 500 tornadoes in a month. This uh, this event is also, was a uh, number was number 1 first place in the number of tornadoes in Minnesota ever at 27. This I believe was only beaten out recently by the December 2021 derecho which, on top of producing many tornadoes in Iowa, also produced a lot in Wisconsin and Minnesota. 1992 is also notable for being the last back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back year of having F5 tornadoes. I say back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back because this goes all the way back to 1990, where we had the, I believe it was the Heston F5 as well as its other tornado that happened in Kansas. 1991 saw Andover, and then 1992 saw the F5 that I just recently talked about. And as we can see here from this countywide uh, June touchdown um, average, we see here that this is pretty in season for June. The way high pressures are placed over the year, over the United States is what is over here around New England and the Deep South, or over by the Four Corners. So this causes low pressures to go high and then dip down low, where then all of the tornadic activity happens. And also, a thing we can see here, uh, county-wide of course, it's the fact that the largest counties in the states 
for example, this Nebraskan uh, county that I believe that when Congress was making it forgot to split up, or McLean County, which is smack dab here in the middle of Illinois, totally not where I am, I wouldn't dox myself like that, uh, get the largest amount of tornadoes, because they just have the most amount of ground area. But again, a quite prolific June event. And that would be all that I have for this June of 1992 outbreak. Producing the last F5 in back-to-back-to-back in -back -to -back -to -back years. 1993 would not see an F5 as far as I know. So until then, I thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.